So, it's been a while. MetaZoo. What is MetaZoo? Um, this is going to be a bit of a first impressions video. So, MetaZoo is a game that came out on Kickstarter. It's been exploding a little bit recently um, as part of the recent collectibles craze of 2021 and 2020. Um, I have to admit, I there is a local store to me that carries that carried the Kickstarter version of this product. They carried they were one of the first physical locations carrying this product. And I saw this product. The art style caught my eye. And I remember looking at it and thinking, what is this? Is this some sort of game aimed at kids? And then I think I saw a card that had a lot of gore on it and it confused me. And then I bought what I wanted to buy, which was miniatures, and left the store. And it took me, I think, about two weeks of being into this game again to realize that that's what I had seen. Because this was months ago. This must have been, like, right after the the stuff had first been put into the um, stores. But anyway, long story short... Um, it did catch my eye upon first seeing it in the store, but then I did pass over it because I was trying to buy what I wanted and leave. Um, so it caught my eye again when I saw an advertisement for it on, oh, I think it was on YouTube. Maybe it was on Facebook. I'm not sure. But, um, I hemmed and hawed a little bit too long over whether or not to buy uh, any of the products from their website, and they sold out. But I'm going to get some when they restock. If you go to the MetaZoo Marketplace, uh, if you just type MetaZoo into Google and go to their website, it'll come up. You can um, keep watching for when they restock their first edition product, which is not going to have this K. It's not going to have this green Kickstarter symbol up here. Um, but it is going to be a pretty limited run and i think it's probably going to be um still quite desirable so don't worry if you miss out on this kickstarter stuff i mean frankly i i think the game is pretty neat so a little bit about the game in terms of theme it's cryptid themed at first it says the first set is called cryptid nation but from what i understand they really do intend to go a little bit into um folklore stuff a bit more especially when um going to a when branching outside of America, going to other um, parts of the world. But I do think they always intend to keep that, like, cryptid, you know, new monsters, things of the age of the internet sort of feel. But I think they are going to start including a lot more monsters that are based on, you know, ancient folklore and that sort of thing. Um, there's already quite a bit of that in the game. But, um... Uh, between you and me, I think they're sprinkling that stuff out between the first few sets a little bit. Hence why Paul Bunyan isn't in the first set, but Babe is. Um, but anyway, um, in terms of the actual gameplay, it's very strange because there's elements of it that are very much like Pokemon. Um, in terms of there's a lot of sort of status effects that are similar to poke Pokemon. There's a uh, type advantage and disadvantage that's similar to Pokemon. There's um, coin flip mechanics and things like that. But some things are a little bit closer to Yu-Gi-Oh. You've got some trap card elements from what I understand. And also, from in my opinion, the numbers are something that's much closer to Yu-Gi-Oh. You start with a thousand life and the monsters all have... Um, uh, pretty high life and damage. I guess it's pretty similar to modern Pokemon. I'm used to really old Pokemon cards where the numbers were much smaller. But um, anyway, but then the mana system or the aura system is, and the and the sort of color wheel is reminiscent of Magic the Gathering. There's Moxes essentially and a Lotus equivalent. Um, when you attack, you choose to send attackers in, and then your opponent can choose which, can choose which monsters to defend with, and the monsters deal damage to each other during the defending step. So it's a lot more deep than Pokemon. It's a lot more in depth. Um, it's a it's very interesting, 
And obviously the art style is very reminiscent of like 90s Pokemon, Ken Sugimori, watercolor. Um, that's what grabbed me in the first place. Um, but you know, so this is a game I think to keep your eye on. I wouldn't go absolutely nuts on the $3,000 Kickstarter boxes. Um, unless you believe in the game. And I mean, I believe in the game somewhat. I'll be totally open. I spent... I mean, if you count th things that I haven't actually bought yet that I'm pre-ordering and et cetera, et cetera, um, I'm budgeting myself about $1,000 to spend on this game, and I'm spending a good $400 of that or so on the newer product and maybe five or $600 of it on the Kickstarter product. Um, the Kickstarter product's getting quite expensive. I missed the boat on the sample product. Or on the on the sample cards. Um, also, some of that money might be going towards getting some uh, sketch cards. So we'll keep you updated on all this. See what what I get. But I'm not planning to like jump into this game. Um, and I know that sounds like a lot of money. For me, that's not a huge amount of money. Um, I I've made a lot of money off of Flesh and Blood. You know, I'm in a much better place than I was this time last year or this time two years ago. Um, I can afford to spend a thousand dollars on something for fun. You know what I mean? I I think that this game is it, it does look really fun. Um, oh, there was one more thing I totally missed. That's like a huge draw. I my my mistake. This this video is gonna be a little haphazard. It has fourth wall mechanics, so that's like basically like the unhinged uh, Magic the Gathering sets or um, that sort of thing where. You have um, cards that, you know, you can't play this monster if you're wearing pants. Or when you play this spell or this monster or whatever it is, you have like a staring contest with your opponent. And then there's like a small effect that goes the way of the person who wins the staring contest. You know, when you play this monster, if you yell, it gains a bonus. You know, there's a lot of very silly stuff baked into it. Um, but at the same time, the company says that they want to be competitive. And from what I can see, the power level in the f in this first set is very, very high. But it seems like they're trying to be competitive with it. It seems like they're trying to make something that's like a very small set. It's very tight. It's very reminiscent of early Pokemon where there's going to be a lot of repeats and decks. Um, even early Magic. Early any card game. But like it's, it's a small set of cards and... There's some cards that are very much, I'm not going to say auto-includes, but they're like you put them in 95% of decks, and you only have 40 cards in your deck with this game. So I'm going to be interested to see how the competitive scene develops, how they plan to handle the fourth wall stuff with the competitive scene, because I'm really interested in like, you know, a game that's a little bit more casual competitive. I love Flesh and Blood for like hardcore competitive brain strain every match feels like it's down to the wire if both people are giving it their all and are on a, the same skill level but like this game has more of the coin flip elements a little bit more rng i think a little bit more blowout potential especially with this early set um i think it's a little bit more casual but i always like something that has a bit of a competitive edge you know i don't want it to be purely for collecting but i am into the collecting you know it's fun Alright, and so without further ado, I'm going to open this blister pack, which I don't even want to know what they're worth right now. I'm going to be... Oh man, they're going up in price, and I probably shouldn't open this, but I don't care. I don't really want to buy the promo card individually, and I got this for pretty cheap. I don't really want to resell it, you know? And I'm not going to open that many of these... MetaZoo Kickstarter packs. Um, we're going to open one in this video today, and then we might open a couple more. We're going to open at least one more Kickstarter pack on the channel, but oh, I totally ripped the backing. I didn't realize there was even a whole bunch of art back there. Oh, man. Oh, well. <laughs> That's my bad, but we got the um, pack and the card out without damaging them. So... A quick overview. We've got our little metallic Mothman card. Or Ma Mothman coin. Cryptid Nation. A quick overview. Um, 
they're trying to make this game extremely collectible. Um, this Mothman promo is um, sort of, I mean, Mothman is supposed to be like the Charizard of the game, so you can imagine this to be a, a Charizard promo card. Um, just quick overview, okay? The back of it is holographic. That means it's a regular hollow as opposed to a reverse hollow where the monster would be hollow foil and the background would not. The symbol up here is the rarity symbol. This gold indicates that it's a rare, although this is a promo, so it doesn't really matter. But a silver would be an uncommon and a bronze would be a um, common. These symbols up here are like basically um, keywords in Magic the Gathering. You know, they're like effects that I so I like I think this one means he has flight or something I'm not really sure I don't know what the bite one means I have no idea um and then these effects down here are fourth wall effects um if you get my camera to focus so one of these means that he increases his attacks by 25 damage when he's in a city I believe and the other one means that he increases his attacks by 25 damage when he when it's nighttime and this could mean in real life it's nighttime or you're in a city or it could mean that there's a card on the field that says um it's real life. Uh, or, I mean, that says it's uh, nighttime or you're, that you're in a city. Sorry, I'm babbling a little bit. Um, I don't really know what the QR code is. They've got some interesting little stuff here about, like, the date of birth, 1966. So that must be when, like, the Mothman was first recorded, I guess, somewhere. I'm not really sure where that date comes from for all these beasties. You've got GPS, weight, height. Does this cryptid serve the powers of good or evil? The mystery of Mothman remains unknown. However, what remains true is that anyone that gazes upon it is petrified with true fear. I don't know. He's pretty cute. I don't know, guys. True fear? Um, you can see the hollow foil is very reminiscent of old Pokemon. That starburst pattern. It's very nice. Um, this is his health, and that's his cost. He costs three dark aura, I believe. So that's like... Three swamps, <laughs> I suppose, if you play MTG. Anyway, so um, we're going to be sticking him into a top loader. We're not going to open him from the uh, seal just yet. Um, from what I understand, he's a pretty powerful card, but I think they gave out a bunch of this promo um, in like a first edition form when I missed out on the, the first selling out in their website so i'm pretty sure that i'll be able to um get like a much less valuable less desirable version of this guy to actually play with because i think he's supposed to be um a quite powerful card they've done some interesting stuff with rarity hmm maybe i should i'll, I'll have to find a better uh container for this guy so we're just gonna have him sit there for now so he doesn't get hurt um They've got some really interesting stuff in terms of the rarity. There's the sample cards, which have black borders, and there's only a hundred of each of them. And then the Kickstarter first edition, which is what I'm holding in my hand, has, I believe, 2,500 boxes were printed. And then, you know, some additional blisters and spellbooks besides. Um, but it's about one-tenth of the size of the print run of the first edition product that's coming up. So here goes my first ever... MetaZoo pack opening. I've heard these packs are like really awful to open. You can like damage the cards and stuff. So actually I'm going to um, reach off camera and uh, make a little bit of a cut at the top of the card or pack here. I happen to have a um, X-Acto knife to hand because I enjoy miniatures. So here we have our First ever pack. Oh my gosh. The first card is a Matlocks. Oh man, we didn't get all the way across. Sorry, I'm keeping you all waiting. Gotta delay the big reveal, right? I mean, this is like the point of the video. This is the main event. This pack is worth like, I don't know, maybe $100? I mean, it's not quite worth $100 yet, I don't think, but they've really been going up. So from what I understand, the back pack, or the back card should be an aura card, although there are mistakes. So hopefully, okay, so we got 
a meteor shower aura card, which um, I think is like, I think there's like an alien um, color. It's like green. It's like off green. I don't, I don't, I don't rem remember what it's called. Cosmic maybe. So maybe this is like a cosmic land essentially. Um, all right. So matt locks and you can see what i mean with the like watercolor style it's very reminiscent of 90s ken sugimori pokemon sort of stuff but they're not afraid of the gore this game is not for little kids matt locks is he's got a giant appetite he's gonna club you moon-eyed people so this is the cosmic this is a earth common i think earth i don't know so this one's cosmic for sure. Old Green Eyes, a spirit card. Man, I don't even know all the cards in the set, so. Paralyze. I do have some idea of what's good in terms of rares and stuff, so we'll see if I get anything good. Menehune. Um, from what I understand, this was the first piece of art done um, for the game. That's just a little tidbit. Miracle Touch. Okay, that's an uncommon. Oh, the Menehune was an uncommon too. Okay, so we're into like our uncommons. We've got an uncommon as our second last card. Morpheus. From what I understand, this is a really powerful spell. Um, sleep is like a really... Yeah, so like this inflicts you with sleep. And sleep is something where your monster like can't do anything. Or your beastie, excuse me, can't do anything until you flip he uh, tails. Or your opponent flips tails or something. But this keeps them asleep for forever. Um, so it's not quite as RNG as Pokemon. All right, this is the last card, the guaranteed hollow. It's white. Oh my gosh, we got a chaos crystal. This is a pretty decent pull. And it's a hollow, not a reverse hollow. So this is the um, Black Lotus equivalent of the set. You can see that it's gray. So it doesn't have a, oh, is that a nick at the top or is that just some fuzz? Oh, good, it's fuzz, great. Um, you can see that it's gray, which means it can be put into any deck, I think, or, or at least it can be played for any color. It's a colorless card, basically. It has a zero cost, but it has 25 health. So you can play this and it creates three aura of any type. Very recognizable, it's a black lotus except it has 25 health, and 25 health is extremely low for this game. From what I understand, this card had 100 health um, when it was a sample, um, so it must have had 100 health at some point in testing, and I'm sure that was too overpowered. Um, but yeah, all of the Mox equivalents and the Black Lotus equivalent in this game have health and can be removed. Look at that card, man. Holy. What a nice first pack. Man, this video went a bit long, but... Boy, was it worth it. Oh. So, MetaZoo is a very interesting, very, very interesting um, uh, card game. Keep it on your radar. It might, might explode because, frankly, people are primed to throw money at card games right now, and I don't exactly blame them. Um, but, man, I'm just hoping that what growth MetaZoo does see is manageable. You know what I mean? I'm hoping that the first set doesn't get all like bought out by like investor types and then people can't play the game. Because I really think that this game um, has a community that will resist investors, and I've already seen it happening, in a way that the flesh and blood community didn't really. Um, not that investing is a bad thing. I, I made a ton of money off of Flesh and Blood, you know what I mean? But I was in it from the start, and I was never really predatory with it, and I never, like, bought, like, oh, I'm gonna buy, like, 200 of this card because it's under, you know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, there's nothing wrong with, like, specking on a card. The secondary market is what keeps these TCGs alive, causes them to thrive. I have nothing against the evil 3% investors. My point is merely that they can certainly contribute to the growing pains that a game can have um, at, at its earliest stages. And the sort of explosive growth you see in Flesh and Blood and potentially now beginning to happen in this, I mean, it's already had some crazy growth, I think because Rudy mentioned it. Um, 
it can be dangerous, you know? But I'm glad that the community with MetaZoo seems to be, like, really dedicated to, like, trading and trying to keep the community open and play the game with everyone, get everyone involved, you know? I mean, it's a fun game. Let's collect some cards. Thanks for watching.